Good evening. It's Sunday the 17th of March 2019 and I've been wanting to do a video on the up and coming um, transits of the Maastricht Treaty chart the 1st of November 1993 and, um, and looking at the Uranus, important Uranus transits that, co that are coming up. But I'd also want to address in this video the various tensions I think that are going on in the country and and then have a look at um, what's going on in the national chart and so on. Now this is a complex series of things that I that has been going on in my mind so it might not come out exactly smoothly um, uh, but I've been jenning up on various things about the EU and having to think about what is going on in the country because there is obviously a tremendous tension um, here and um, I want to start there because this tension is clearly a, 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 a system within the country, a, a system of opposites. And one is towards the pull to an integrationist uh, policy with the rest of the world, a kind of unified government, a kind of pull towards a, what is called a further integration, but will eventually, and let's not be uh, unclear about this point, eventually it will be towards a if if the European uh, project goes ahead, and at the moment actually it's a little bit um, it's a little bit iffy with the the rise of um, uh, nationalistic uh, governments and movements throughout throughout Europe at the moment. There is a kind of counteractive process due to a fear of being overwhelmed. Um, or, or somehow even destroyed underneath because the nation state is a kind of like a mother and a father. It's the fatherland and the motherland. And uh, it provides a, a ground base of solid identity. And the achievement of identity uh, in, in psychological development is very important. Some people never move beyond a sense of identity of their role or their family or their position in society uh, or, or uh, achieving some kind of fame or importance. Um, but but to, to actually achieve an identity, a sense of I, a, 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 a someone that contributes value and importance to the world and can um, have a sense of solidity within the um, psychological integration of uh, the uh, psychological integration of the individual. Now in spiritual development, the sense of personal identity, once it's been gained, is um, surrendered to a certain extent to a more inclusive form, a more kind of inclusive form of consciousness which steps beyond the individual ego and starts to open up to transcendent realities beyond the ego, beyond the ego, um, through the psychic realms and the subtle realms. And um, if, if you're interested in Advaita, which is the, uh, the, the philosophy of non-duality arising in India, um, chief exponent of that was Sri Ramana Maharshi. And by the way, a friend of mine, uh, Rustam, is in uh, uh, the ashram at the moment over there. I saw him a couple of days ago. So if you're seeing this, Rusty, hi. It was wonderful to talk with you from such a holy uh, place. And I'm still waiting for the photographs, though. Okay, now just to come back in, I wandered out there, but I wanted just to outline that the stages of growth of um, consciousness don't just stop with the ego. Uh, just don't stop with role, social role, persona, of father or mother or important person or whatever it is. But they are moved beyond. In spiritual development, they are moved beyond. But they're not moved beyond unless they're first established. Unless there is a, uh, a, a, a solidness of identity, otherwise one has nothing to give up. It isn't a sacrifice. It isn't really a surrender of anything. And so a person not, that have skipped uh, these stages of ego development um, uh, to, to form, as I say, a solid sense of self, uh, 
is um, is is in a position where if they open up to higher realities, uh, higher I mean more inclusive consciousness, a, a sense that consciousness is a is a passing stream of experience, and then uh, we can observe that experience called the observer or the witness to consciousness, and then it has higher higher um, uh, higher mystical states, if you like, uh, beyond that, which can achieve by certain yogic and uh, meditational disciplines. Uh, Christian contemplative tradition, uh, Zen Buddhism, uh, the Hindu tradition of Advaita, and uh, some, Sufis, uh, the, some, some Sufi states, and uh, Taoism is very much connected with flowing with the with the all with the um, with the energy system within oneself, so that one kind of flows with the purpose of the universe, um, of which we are a reflection. Now I've got lost a bit there, or not lost, but uh, I, I went off the uh, mark there a bit because I wanted to explain, I wanted to bring that into where we are as, as a nation and where national identities, um, in order to give them up, you see, we, um, we first have to have had them established and any giving up of, a, of an identity, even if it's the nation state, any giving up of that is tantamount to opening one to annihilation. It's, it's the anxiety of facing a new, uh, a new land and that um, it always requires a personal death, um, a, a, a kind of death of the ego, a, a profound transformation where the, where the mind and feelings and, and apprehension of the world open up to a, a larger reality, which means letting go of the old one. And so if in Europe we are to come to a larger sense of ourselves uh, in, to, towards the idea of a world citizen or a European citizen at first, but there's no doubt in my mind that eventually there'll be a one world government. But things, governments can get a bit too large for the individual. It's too much for them to hold. And so I see this um, process of pulling back from integration within the psyche of various nations. Uh, in France, the uprisings are uh, tremendously powerful at the moment. Um, the yellow vests, uh, you know, they're having more and more impositions uh, uh, post on in France, taxes, tax hikes for fuel and so on just sparked it. But underneath, there's this sense that the country is no longer what it was. It no longer has the freedom. It seems to be um, being caught up in a, 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 a movement towards a fusion of individual identities with the larger identity of being a global citizen. It's a very Piscean and a very uh, Aquarian vision in many ways, whereas Aquarius identifies with the human family itself. Um, and, and Pisces is a suffusion of identity, it's surrendering into it um, uh, in, in, in a kind of uh, extension of faith, as it were. So I believe that this is what is going on. There's those people that are not yet ready to give up or to surrender. Uh, because when you the globalization and uh, and so on even on the internet there's there's good things for it and there's bad things for it one of the bad things is that once some you know in, in being connected to a larger body one is subject to the trends of that larger body interfering with the individual um in other words, there's no means of cutting it off. It's rather like a, a bug on the, uh, on the internet or the computer. It gets around to everywhere because there aren't any borders, not any safety checks. This is what happened with the collection of um, uh, contracts and subcontracts and sub-subcontracts made in the, uh, through the banks, uh, subdividing the debt and uh, displacing it over a, a wide field with, uh, across the banks to do with... Um, uh, over lending and so on uh, more and more money was wanted and in the end uh, it ran out uh, it, the the there was no one to lend anymore some people were promised that if they if they wanted to get out of the debt they could always, also also always wet, sell the house you see and come out with a small profit but by that time debt was so much the banks didn't have enough to lend and everything collapsed in 2008 
Pluto, by the way, just had moved into the sign of Capricorn when it happened. And I gave a lecture uh, in uh, Purley at that time. And it was called, Is This the End of Capitalism? Because I very much link Capricorn with this a sense of industry and building up something, something concrete, a kind of structure. It's to do with architecture and to do with hierarchical developments. Um, that's why the goat uh, climbs up the mountain to the top in successive steps in order to reach a, a purposeful function of life on earth. It's, it, there's a sense in Capricorn of a, of a future goal waiting to be trodden, a, a, an achievement of some kind, a, a building up, a use is made of the earth material, the incarnate existence. Uh, and inside the sign of Capricorn, there's this spiritual pull to, to do the best that you can. I've comically um, um, made an epithet, uh, is it an, not an epithet, I can't remember what it is, an acronym, acronym, um, G-O-A-T spells goat, and it means greatest of all time. So there's something inherent in the sign of Capricorn to do with industry, to do with uh, building and construction, and uh, ultimately under psychological sense is to do with building self-respect something to do with the importance of, uh, of um, making something out of, out of earth, making something out of one's incarnation, and to be the best that one can. It's a kind of paternal symbolism in it, uh, striving towards social approval, the approval of a father god, or the approval of something, you know, and so that why life has been worthwhile. Now, I mentioned Capricorn because Pluto entered Capricorn. and Whenever Pluto enters a sign, it tends to bring out all the, the corruption in it. Um, well, it. It's as if it's the, um, I think it was Dr. Liz Green called it the, um, the, the cosmic toilet. Um, it comes around and it tries to flush out all of those impurities and toxins which are no longer useful in the sign. And what we've seen since that time, since Pluto and Capricorn are, all of the institutions, governments, uh, the church, um, banks, or any kind of institutionalized form and hierarchies, and where they've gone a bit wrong, where they've become too tyrannical, too set, too, too, um, too powerful for people to influence. And we come back to the EU that um, it's true that nobody votes in the European Commission, apart from uh, the people of the heads of state. Nobody votes in the heads of state, apart from national governments, which vote in leaders. But it all gets a kind of um, um, a, 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 a internal democracy is there, but it's not really... Um, it's not really given to the individual and individual countries. And if one gives oneself up to a supranational body of, of government like this, um, then one is yielding, one is giving into uh, the organization of, of, a, uh, of a, a, a group of countries, 28 countries, soon to be 27. Uh, we, we believe it to be 27. We don't really know. We're in a Mercury retrograde period at the moment. So this idea of um, giving up the national identity in the, and and. and and, and this will happen, whether it's in 20 years, uh, there will be uh, no pound, no sovereign, no, um, no, no particular banks. There won't even be a, a government in government which, which can do anything because all of the major laws and institutions and tax systems and uh, fiscal systems, the ability to bring tax and, and so on, all of these will be governed. And this is what so many people have um, uh, gripes against the fishing industry was decimated when um, uh, the EU was allowed to fish within a certain uh, distance of, of our shores. It was completely decimated. So there are a great many losers in then giving up um, this to to a national body, to to a higher supranational, a superstructure or super state, and. I don't know, uh, I don't feel that I'm in a position to say which one is better. Is, is, is moving into this higher order value, this, this more inclusive value of diversity and so on, is that, is that better th than what we have? Um, my 
personal feeling is that uh, in general, I mean, I, I sometimes have trouble getting up in the morning. I, I feel myself as um, a, a reasonably balanced individual with some interests in life and various things going on for me. Um, but, but it, it, you know, uh, life's hard enough. It's taken me a long while to get some form of psychological balance. Now, in my 50s, uh, I took a psychotherapy for a long time before I, I felt okay just as an individual. And I feel I've been fairly well educated. I come from the working class, built myself up to where I am, which isn't prestigious or anything else like that. But I, I feel I have a, a reasonable working sense of good psyche. And um, I'm a psychotherapist and have been since uh, 1994. And I enjoy that profession very much, both internationally and here in uh, Bristol. And I, 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 I just see in people that there's still a very fragile sense of them. A very fragile, there's, there's a lot of anxiety in the world. There's a lot of anxiety in people. There's a lot of problems the West have not solved. And... Um, and, and that fragility of the human ego to just to go on uh, as we are, to just to get out and deal with the existential realities of life. Um, that the, the, the idea of ontological anxiety, simply the, the anxiety of being is difficult enough. And so I feel that because of the differentials, there's so very many differentials between uh, people's psychological maturity and stability that uh, you just to put them all into a melting pot and let them get on with it um, has, is, is proved very, very difficult. Some people manage it, a lot don't. And so asking any individual nation, any individual religion, whatever it is, that, that, that has been the foundation stone of um, their uh, identity, their education and the, the structures of consciousness, for example, in the West, have been built up through Christian tradition. Now, then, even though there's a decline in the traditional beliefs of Christianity, we live with them. We are them in, 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 in our beings, in the way we act. These things have passed through. I know there's a lot wrong with, with different religions when it comes to, um, to fundamentalist, where, where, where the belief systems uh, become absolutes, where they become fixed things, um, uh, rather than a fluid structures through which spirituality can progress. However, I, di I digress as usual. What I'm talking about is the tension in the country. And there's a lot of people throughout Europe at the moment feeling this tension. One is to so-called evolve into something, into a larger body. And, but this is generally led by people that are wealthy, and people that are not affected by the uh, strains of migration. And, and I'm including here the migrants themselves who come into new countries and don't, don't, don't feel welcome sometimes, or they do and they don't. And then they're asked also to um, take on this diverse liberal, neoliberal agenda of, of, of the West, which uh, some are, are not uh, ready to do. It doesn't, you know, every, every kind of individual identity is built a, a structure through the race, through the religion of the race. And, and you don't just pretend that you can get rid of those overnight by uh, uniting in a humanistic superstructure like the EU. Now, eventually, as I say, when a, a, a person is reasonably stable in themselves, then they can give up. And it is almost like a, they can give up this, their sense of themselves, uh, the sense of uh, uh, solid identification with who they are, and, and then open up to the higher realities of, of, of a more um, uh, all-encompassing sense of consciousness, as I say, the non-dual consciousness of the Vita, starting with the witness and various subtle stages that eventually move on to a, a perception of the world as it is rather than through just the subjective lens of the individual psyche. Now I can see that I've gone on at some length about this and uh, uh, I think that what's happening at the moment is that I'm going to have to do several videos one after the other to introduce the chance that I have of the EU, of Donald Tusk which is the European Council President, 
Theresa May, the UK chart, and so on. But I wanted to address this uh, profound issue because it's tearing people apart. People are very frightened, very frightened, I think, of losing touch with the sense of who they are, both in their environment and their culture. And, um, uh, and uh, but at the same time, there is, seems to be a, a pull of, uh, of evolution, at least the social evolution, towards a more integrationist diverse diversity. And I think that trend, as we will see from the EU chart to the sun in Scorpio, the same as the United Nations chart to sun in Scorpio, has to do with the, the, um, the, the desire to prevent or to end wars between nations. I think that it is a, 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 a motivation after the Second World War, but also planting the roots, the seeds of, of uh, a European integration uh, right back into the 1910s, perhaps even before that, um, uh, with various people. They've, they've found that it, it, it's the striving for dominance within um, separate nations which have tended to cause wars, empire building and things like that. Virtually no nation is... Um, uh, 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 with, without that, it's not just that England has an empire, I mean, it, was, it was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and it was the Roman Empire, and so on, um, Turkish Empire, and uh, uh, obviously the Russian Empire, the USSR, its uh, incorporation of massive load of, of, of uh, uh, countries, and so on. Anyway, so that is what we will be looking at in uh, forthcoming videos, and I hope this hasn't been too rambly, but that's what's going on, and I see this astrologically as a difference between where Uranus is, it just, it just entered Taurus, it entered um, uh, Aries uh, along with the Arab Spring about seven years ago. Uh, somehow when it entered there, the, the, this sense of individuality was, was promoted as, as what, what's next on the agenda, what the evolving thing in life is going to be. But this Neptune is still in Pisces, wanting a kind of redemptive, uh, a pull to, uh, to, towards redemption of peace and quietude, seeing us as all one, seeing as a, as a meeting at a place of um, deep resonance with the soul of people rather than the, the individual sense of self. But my personal feeling is that you cannot possibly force that on individuals or nations when they are not ready to do so. Because if you do, it, it's rather like a t asking a person to take on too much. And when, when a, a personal ego, when a, an individual, it, it, it bears too much, um, too much pressure on to do things, too much change of the ego structures, they begin to break. And what begins to break, of course, is this uh, uh, a psychosis comes out. Uh, we've already had that terrible uh, 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 act of terrorism um, uh, in uh, New Zealand, uh, Christchurch. Um, and, oh, was that? yes, I think it's in New Zealand. And uh, these, these, these people's psyches are thin that they that they have to take it out on something um, and usually it's blind and innocent people get hurt but these pressures this move towards homogeneity and a suffusion the individual identities in a conglomerate mass is for some people the death of their own selves it's it, it you, you can't give or surrender something up if you first haven't um, achieved something to give it up see and so um, the, those people who are feeling this pressure uh, to choose one way or another are in a very very tense state government is a reflection in many ways of the state of the people except at the moment they're not abiding by the majority of people who voted in the referendum okay uh, so I'll finish this video here for now, and then uh, we'll do various other ones explaining and amplifying some of the things that I've mentioned in this one.